Eclipse Math, Umbra and Penumbra Spreadsheet. These calculations will take place on both a flat earth and a globe earth. Now this is the short version of this video. Uh, I'm only going to share with you the, a brief summary of the, um, the methods, sort of the techniques I used. Um, I'm not going to actually give you the, the breakdown of the, of the actual uh, formulas, the, the calculations. That'll be for a, for a later, more math geeky video. So I've got a couple other videos on eclipses. Um, the, the first one that I recorded over on the right was just um, making a scale model. So this was only concerned with uh, actual, you know, inches, centimeters, you know, how big you'd make the Earth and how far the moon would be away, etc. If you were interested in trying to make a scale model to simulate the eclipse. The, uh, the second video I made on the left is um, sort of breaking down the umbra and the penumbra. Uh, what you would see from the ground and you know what the different parts of the diagram mean now this video is going to uh, Actually do the calculations uh, the the actual calculations for umbra and penumbra um, Based on the size of the Sun and the size of the moon and the interesting thing is that these calculations are Almost identical for between the flat earth and the uh, and the globe earth um, So I really only had to do the calculations once and I had to do a little tweaking uh, to, to make it work for both uh, globe and, um, and flat earth. But uh, we're going to take the traditional um, umbra penumbra diagram. This is actually a screen capture from GeoGebra, uh, which I covered in the last video, how you can actually make this diagram yourself very easily. And basically there are four starting values for the spreadsheet. And that is the diameters of both the sun and moon, and then the distance uh, from the earth um, of the sun and the moon. And you may say, well, what about the Earth? Well, I'm treating the Earth as a flat, as a flat plane. Uh, you, you may find that a little bit amusing, but uh, but these calculations are very, very simplified. All right. So with those four inputs, what can we do? Well, the um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to assume that the eclipse takes place directly over the observer's head. Now we all know this is not true, um, but just to simplify the calculations. Uh, we'll just assume that the, the moon and the sun are lined up perfectly over the viewer's head. That's going to make the geometry uh, much, much easier. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the size of the umbra. The size of the umbra. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line. In geometry, they call this uh, construction. Uh, so you can construct a line between the centers of the moon and the sun, uh, extending to the earth. And then we're only going to take a look at, at one half of the uh, of this diagram. So notice I've grayed out the other uh, diagonal lines and we're only going to be concerned with the umbra. So in other words, it's the top of the sun to the top of the moon and then extend those lines to the earth. Okay. And it, like I said, this takes, this, this works perfectly in the flat earth model because in the flat earth model, you'd go from the top of the sun to the top of the moon and extend the line towards the earth. Okay. It's the exact same, it's the exact same technique. So we're going to um, figure out how, how we can figure that out. So like I said, we're only going to look at the top, the top side of this diagram. Um, so the, the pink line connecting, you know, tangents connecting the sun and moon and the orange line connecting their centers. And so really the calculations is, is a very simple one. Um, if we could uh, pretend this is on the coordinate plane, the x, y axis, x, y, uh, you know, coordinate plane, you can actually calculate the slope based on the radii of the sun and moon and then the difference in distance. Um, and like I said, this works, this works in the heliocentric model because the, the sun is 93 million miles away and really huge, but it also can work on the flat earth model where the sun and the moon are very close to each other, uh, but also close in size. So I figure out that slope and then you just extend that slope, uh, to the earth. Um, and this will give you the umbra, the umbra size. Okay. So now we're going to find the size of the penumbra. And again, the penumbra is sort of the gray, the gray area where the, the, uh, sun is partially covered by the moon. So now we're going to be focused on, again, we draw a line through the centers of both moon and sun, but then we have this, this diagonal line, this pink diagonal line. And what can we do with this? Well, we can make similar triangles. Now, you may notice these triangles don't exactly match up to the circles. That's because uh, the, these diagonal lines are really extreme. In the actual real world, either flat earth or globe earth, these, the actual lines, these, these uh, supposed diagonal lines, are very, very close to being parallel. In other words, the angles we're talking about are half a degree. And if the angle was half a degree, uh, these triangles would, would nail those, uh, those circles much, uh, much better. 
but right now it looks a little distorted. But you, you essentially have similar triangles because the angle that they, those two triangles meet in the middle is the same angle. Those are called vertical angles. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to extend um, the triangles, the, make a third similar triangle, uh, and extend it all the way to the earth. And then just measure the one side of it, and you've got the size of your penumbra. All right. So again, like I said, we assumed that the eclipse is taking place directly over the viewer's head, but um, in reality, that's that's not the case. So our starting values, we had four starting values. We're going to add a fifth starting value, and that is the angle of elevation of the eclipse. In other words, where, how far above the horizon are you going to see the eclipse? Um, so here we have uh, some friendly fellow um, standing on Earth. And then we've got the angle of elevation. So again, the moon and sun are lined up, but they're at some angle uh, with the Earth. And then what we're going to do, or what, what the spreadsheet does, is it, it just applies trig uh, to the umbra and penumbra uh, calculations, and it makes them slightly longer. Because, you know, if, if it's directly overhead, the shadow is as small as it can be. But if it's at an angle, the shadow is spread out over a little bit more area. Okay, so that's a calculation done by the spreadsheet. So um, you may be asking yourself, in every single one of these drawings, uh, there was a flat line representing the Earth. So uh, I am assuming that the, the uh, Earth is locally, <laughs> locally flat. Um, and when I say locally flat, I, I, I mean, you know, it's, a, it's approximate, okay? So it could, the Earth could be genuinely flat, uh, or the, the, we could just sort of pretend that it's sort of a, a flattish section of Earth. Um, so what, what does this mean for the globe? Well, what you could picture the globe as being is a is a many many sided many faceted polyhedron, and we're going to do is we're going to zoom into just one of those little facets, and we're going to say, okay, well that's where we're standing, that's where we're going to view the eclipse from, okay. Well, that little face right there is a plane, okay. And the thing is, this is these are my calculations. This is not done by any astronomer. Um, this is not done by by NASA, and this is just me with my limited knowledge of of uh, high school geometry. Uh, making these calculations. So in, in actuality, you know, if you're going to do it on the globe, you, you'd use spherical, spherical geometry, spherical trigonometry, uh, but I never learned any of that. So I, I'm actually just pretending it's a flat plane. So you can actually extend this flat plane, um, and then you can have the uh, the umbra and penumbra, you know, shining on this flat plane. Okay. So I'm I'm just essentially treating just one little piece of the Earth as being a flat a flat plane. But the problem with the penumbra is the penumbra is so big. Um, compared to the globe, the, the penumbra is so big that it, it actually wraps around it. Um, so what I did in the spreadsheet is I have a 10% value. So instead of instead of this this big large circle, I have this, this small circle. I have a 10% value, and to give us the width of the zone from 90 to 99% of totality, um, and that's a lot easier to compare with the real world values because it's right next to the umbra, and you've got the width of the umbra, and then you've got this width of this sort of a donut which is the 99 to 90% um, partial eclipse value. So the, the whole point of the spreadsheet is just to kind of automate the calculations, but then you can kind of have fun with it and compare it to real world values. So without further ado, let's go to the actual spreadsheet. Okay, here's the spreadsheet. Uh, now there is one thing that may be a little confusing and that it says heliocentric on the left and then flat earth on the right. There's one uh, piece of input you'll notice there uh, certain cells are marked green. Um, the the uh, this piece of input right here, the angle of elevation, um, that actually applies. That, that'll change the calculations in both the heliocentric and the flat earth. That's the only place on on the uh, spreadsheet where I had that. I, I just had some room on the spreadsheet. And I guess I could have changed the layout a little bit. But but this value, it's not it's not just flat earth angle of elevation. It'll actually apply to uh, to these calculations down here as well. So let's um, let's take it take it from the top. And I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the flat Earth model because it's a lot easier to understand. Um, not only is that line on the left side of the diagram a straight line, but it's you know it's the flat plane of the Earth. So again, here are our four inputs: uh, the height of the Sun above the Earth, the uh, diameter of the Earth, the height of the Moon above the Earth, and the diameter of the Moon. Um, now I do have a little calculation in here just in case you put in the Sun height and the Moon height such that they would actually be be um, hitting each other, I, I actually perform a little error checking. Um, but basically those are the four numbers, and with those four numbers it will calculate uh, all these other things. Now there's something else that I did not mention, and that is one important part of the eclipse 
is knowing that the the apparent size of the sun and moon is is very very close uh, the, the moon will appear to be uh, slightly larger than the sun um, so so these two values you see one is what 34 then the other one's 39 because you know you want those numbers to be very very close to each other um, because the you know you, we want the the moon to just barely eclipse the the sun it, the moon the moon's apparent size is bigger but we want it to be just barely bigger so those calculations the apparent size are based on the the height of the moon and the moon's diameter the height of the sun and the sun's diameter that's just a straightforward calculation right there um, so the, the first set of calculations is assuming that the eclipse is happening right over your head. And again, like I said, that's, that's just a simplification for the calculation purposes. So that's uh, the umbra and then the penumbra. Okay, the umbra and then the full width of the penumbra. And then we're going to throw in this angle of elevation. And so I um, happened to look up uh, Cerulean, uh, Kentucky. And I found that the eclipse is at 64 degrees um, in elevation, so I just put in a 64. But again, that cell is in green. You're welcome to change that number. And then what it does is it makes the umbrella a little bit bigger. So we had a 67-mile umbra. Now we have a 75-mile umbra, a little bit bigger. Uh, and again, the penumbra gets bigger. Um, and then I just wanted a width of the 10%, you know, the 10% band, which is essentially just just one tenth, one tenth of the entire width of the of the penumbra. Um, Okay, so now we're going to go over to the globe side. And again, on the globe side, we have uh, the four main inputs, uh, sun, sun distance, sun diameter, moon distance, moon diameter. But because we're on the, the globe, the actual diameter of the Earth will change the distance to the moon. Okay, because in the globe model, obviously, the Earth is a globe. The Earth is round. Um, so depending on how big the Earth is, you're, it's going to change your distance to the moon. All right. So, so that calculation has to be in there, and, and that's going to you know, change the numbers a little bit. But um, mostly, most of these calculations are the same. So we've got a sun apparent size, moon apparent size. That's exactly the same calculation as over on the right. Um, and then we've got uh, the width of the umbra and then the penumbra. Those are very, very similar calculations. Um, and then, like I said, I use the angle of elevation uh, to find the, um, the width of the umbra, the width of the penumbra, which is totally not accurate uh, because it's wrapping around the globe, but then a 10% band uh, for, the, um, for the penumbra. Now, I do want to uh, make sure you guys understand that when I say the width of the penumbra, I'm talking about this, the donut. Um, it, it, it's not the diameter of the penumbra. It's just the, the width of this little, um, you know, from the umbra, you know, to the edge. Okay, that's what I'm calling the, the penumbra width. Now, one thing you'll notice when you start the spreadsheet is you're going to find a, uh, a readme. And this just basically is a huge disclaimer. The, these are, these uh, calculations are very, very approximate. Um, but I was just having some fun with it and, and automating, the, automating the process a little bit. Okay, so uh, again, all the, all the cells are in green that you can edit. And then all the cells in, in red are the ones that are calculated. Um, and you can have some fun with it. Now, the, the calculations, if you try to reverse engineer these calculations, um, they're going to look really, really ugly. So let me just click on one of them. So for example, you know, this, this calculation right here, it's, it's pretty inscrutable. I mean, it doesn't really look like it makes any sense. You know, A8 is the, the diameter of the moon. A19 is the adjusted moon distance. A4 is the diameter of the sun. Uh, a5 is what the distance to the sun and then lastly a19 okay yeah that's right a19 is the adjusted moon distance so you know that calculation is, is very you know kind of hard to, to read <laughs> so I, I hope to make another video where I'm actually explaining you know where where I got those calculations from okay so the link to that spreadsheet is in the description uh, it's a Google Sheets uh, spreadsheet, so you'll need a Google account, and you can then copy it to your Google Drive. Uh, the reason why you have to copy it is because it is a read-only. Uh, it's a read-only document. Obviously, I don't want people to, you know, change my my spreadsheet. But you're welcome to copy it, and then you can make all the changes that that you like. And lastly, I just want to remind you: please be kind uh, to each other. There's a lot of people who disagree with the, each other in the flat Earth debate. And um, just just be kind.
you know, people have different different views. They see things a different way. Um, it's it's uh, it's imperative that you be kind to each other, and then you can actually uh, communicate more more thoughtfully and hopefully come together. Thank you.